This Thursday lunchtime. Now, today is the 40th anniversary of the first episode of classic military comedy Dad's Army being broadcast. So, with this in mind, let me introduce today's rowdy regiment. She's our very own G.I. Jane. Please stand to attention for Sergeant Major McDonald. <laughs> For a mission with the men, she'd take a tumble in the trenches any time. It's Lieutenant Joe Tyler. <laughs> Zoe Tyler. <laughs> Joe! I, I did that in rehearsal as well. And after that award ceremony, <laughs> where we lost out, sadly, we've seen quite enough of her privates on parade. Thank you very much, <laughs> Corporal Carol McGiffin. <laughs> Keeping the troops on their toes, it's me, Brigadier Brambles. <laughs> Coming up as a leading fertility expert, calls for couples who want to conceive to make lifestyle changes before opting for IVF. We're asking, is IVF a good thing or has it contributed too much to our have-it-all society? Plus, if you follow the yellow brick road, you're sure to find our first guest somewhere along the way. Currently appearing in the stage version of The Wizard of Oz, it's Gary Wilmot. <laughs> And he's doing a right royal job playing the role of King Arthur in West End Romp Spam a lot. That's Sanjeev Baskar. <laughs> so, Joe. Who's Joe? It's because Zoe in my head has been changed for a J, and you're Joe Tyler to me. Okay. And you always will be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting your name wrong last week. I kept calling you Zoe Williams. <laughs> Does anybody know who I am? I'm <laughs> Joe! <laughs> Listen, they know Thank who you, you are in your new neck of the woods. Aren't you about to move? Oh, I mean, I've got a yes. I have a little, bit of a dilemma, girls, oh, to share dear. with you. Oh. So, I bought a lovely house, a 500-year-old grade two star listed cottage. Lovely. Beautiful. In the most beautiful village, not far from the village I'm in, I'm in now. Anyway, so I took my brother-in-law down, who's a builder, just to make sure, double check, that the walls aren't falling down, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, it was great, and he said, yeah, great, great buy, you'll do really well. I said, right, I'm just going to have a walk down to the, to the little village, to the uh, antique shop, just to get some bits in. Anyway, so I went to the, I went to the shop, and, um, and he said, um, oh, I'm moving in. I went, yeah, yeah, no, you're not far. And he went, oh, so you're not bothered about all the, um, the ley lines. I went, the what, love? He said, the ley lines. He said, you know, this is the unluckiest village in the country. And I went, <laughs> oh. And he said, well, the ley lines cross in the middle of the village. What are so ley lines again? Something to do with the energy or something. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. Anyway, bad luck. And anyway, so that was... The, and I thought, oh, well, you, you make your own luck. Tony knows. And he went, you were right about the hauntings then. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you are. So anyway, told me all these horrific stories about it's, it's the most haunted village and the most unluckiest village, <laughs> but the most beautiful village I've ever seen. So anyway, so I'm... I'm they I'm just don't like there. you. They don't well, want you to move in. I said, I'm just about to spend 300 quid in your shop. Are you mad? So I just thought, oh, God. Oh, so I was asking him questions. Up there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's been it? I need to ask you a question. So I just, so I thought, I can't do it. I can't do it. I said to my sister, no, I can't. I can't move. I'm not laying in bed every night on my own. Hang on thinking, a hey, it's a lay line, love. Look. You might be all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing laying going on. <laughs> so anyway, so I knocked on the neighbour's door, bless her, Edith, and I just said, I thought she thought, she must have thought I was mad. I went, hi, I'm moving in next door soon. I went, are we haunted? And she said, uh, and she said she'd been living there for fifty years, and said, uh, "Well, no." So we're all right. But you know, now he's put all this in my head. It, what do I do? I do half of me forward? wants to run and go. No, can't do it. Can't do it. Don't even want to be a tiny bit scared. But I don't know. Look, it uh, just—it's all—it's mumbo jumbo. They are. They're just trying to scare you. Don't worry about it. I mean, exactly. What is a ley line? Is it some druid came along and said, right here, this is going to be a problem. Here, let's put a line. You know, where did these lines come from? But, they don't yeah. mean. Any yes, but listen. The there are no such things as ghosts. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll be fine. You reckon? They no. don't yeah. exist. Only in Sherry Houston and Jay McDonald's head. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, listen to your auntie Jane. Right. right. What I want you to do yeah. is I want you to think back to how excited you were before you went into that shop. Yes. And that's the feeling I want you to put into your head right now. Right. Take no notice of this 
man or woman, or whoever it was in the shop who told you all this rubbish, okay? But there are nice ghosts, so just be friendly. There are nice you know, ghosts. There are nice ghosts, yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to be scared. See? You See? do not have to be now, scared. Now, I'm going I'm to go out on a limb here. I don't know if it's too late, but I am a bit with Carolyn. I think it's all rubbish, mumbo-jumbo. But if you've got even the tiniest worry in your mind about this house and it's a lot of money to invest and you're there for a long time, you have to be comfortable. I don't know that I wouldn't back, back out. Down. If you're not a hundred percent delighted, well, because of a ghost, it doesn't even exist. No, but just if it's gonna keep her awake at night, and she's, you know, every sort of, it's an old house. There's gonna be yeah, creaks but, and bumps. But you'll and, get ooh. used to it. You'll yeah. get used to it. Every, you'll obviously every love house, it. Every house has got well, you know, bumps. Well, and I know creaks. there might be a few bumps in the night. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you often dread making phone calls to certain people, and you hope and pray they won't pick up. Listen up, there's a new service called Sly Dial that may be just for you, available already in the States. It's a phone service that puts you directly through to a person's voicemail without their phone ringing. They then receive just a little notification that they've had a missed call, and they're none the wiser. It's perfect for people who do anything to avoid tricky conversations. What do you reckon, Carol? Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Do you know what? I think I've already had that done to me. Oh, do you? Yeah. Because yeah. I've got, you know, my phone is usually there and it's hardly ever on silent unless I'm, you know, in a meeting or asleep. Um, and sometimes, suddenly it just comes up missed call and voice message and I think, hang on a minute, did I just go out the room? No. So somebody already knows how to do this and they're doing it to me. You've been sly dialed. That yeah. I've been sly dialed. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be doing that. Because yeah. how many times, right, when you make a call and it's a call you don't really want to make and you can't really be bothered to have a conversation mm. and it's ringing, it's ringing, you're thinking, don't pick up, don't pick up, don't pick up, don't... Oh, voicemail, brilliant. Oh, anyway, yeah, I just want to leave you a message and it's great like that. I don't... Sometimes I just can't be bothered. But having said that, I do get a bit bored with texting sometimes and I just phone people up mm -hmm. and people are they're getting to the point now where they they've kind of forgotten how to speak mm. you know they look at the phone they go oh it's ring it hello <laughs> <laughs> That's That's true. True. Rebecca, would you like to do some sly dialing uh, I can't think why anybody would want to speak to Carol <laughs> really oh. uh, I would darn it no yeah. sly, no not sly you dialing. Got the phone no? Number. No, no sly dialing no 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 um, I love speaking on the phone when my phone oh my phone's attached to me. I'm lost without it. Love speaking, love phoning people, just like my dad used to be. Always, always on the phone. You phone always answer it then, even if it's somebody you don't particularly like. Oh, no, I'd never not answer it. I'm like, no. You I'd... just give your money, your number to random strangers, don't you? So they ring you up. <laughs> <laughs> no love. Um, but no, I couldn't bear it if somebody's like, I wouldn't bother. I mean, I How think I just. your text... average phone conversation? Hours sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hours. See, I'm with Carol. I like the idea. I'm a chatty girl, you know. I want to leave a message or, you know, speak to someone face to face. Go and meet them. You know, don't get on the. What, what do you get on the phone for? You're normally speaking to someone next door. Yeah. That's what people do. I've phoned my neighbour a couple of times, actually, I've got to say. Lots of hard yeah. communication. I can't, I can't believe it. I would love to go back to the days. When you had one phone in your hall, in the hall, on a and table, it ran, and it went ring, ring. Do you remember that? And it had a little curly wire. On. Yeah, a little curly wire, and you ran downstairs. That kept you fit for a start. Yeah. Up, didn't